Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Cape Biology Past Paper Review. We are continuing with Unit 1, Paper 2, from the year 2019. I have already answered question number 1. So today we're going to focus on question number 2. And just to make a note that question number 2 is from Module Two, and this module relates to genetics, variation, and natural selection. The question reads that table one shows the relative growth rate data for a sensitive strain and resistance strain of the S. typhimorium bacteria exposed to varying concentration of tetracycline antibiotics. Table 1 is relative growth rate data for sensitive strain of bacteria. Now, if you notice the columns of the table, the first column is about tetracycline concentration, which is measured in micrograms per milliliter. And then the second column is the relative growth rate of sensitive strain. And then the third column is relative growth rate of the resistant strain. And so the first part of the question asks us now, so on the grid provided on page 11, plot a line graph showing the relative growth rate on the y-axis versus the tetracycline concentration on the x-axis for the sensitive and resistant strain of bacteria. So now the first thing now, I'm going to go to the graph, which I've already completed to save some time. And so just to make a note or to point out a few things that I make sure include a title. And the title is a graph showing the growth rate versus the concentration of tetracycline. What I've also done is to use a scale or show my scale that I've used. So on the y-axis, I've used 1 centimeter is equivalent to 0 0.05. And x-axis is 1 centimeter is also equal to 0 0.05. And so also I, have, I also have a key. And the key is for SS, which I have right here. And SS means the graph for the sensitive strain. And RS is for the resistant strain. So I have RS on this line. Already I've plotted the graph. And so I want to just indicate some things that I want you to make note of. And also please use smooth points or coordinates. And also use fine lines to complete your graph, all right? And so the graph looks like that. And so I could zoom into it so you could see the entire thing, all right? And so that's the entire graph there. All right, so please make a graph as best as possible. All right, so what we want to do is to jump into the question and see exactly what is being asked of us to do after this. So the graph is writing six marks. And so please be careful and answer everything on that graph. All right, so the first part of the question right here, or the second part, is saying outline the effect of each of the following antibiotic concentration on both bacterial population at 0 0.1 microgram per ml and 0 0.7 microgram per ml antibiotic concentration. So at 0 0.1 micro, microgram per ml, we're looking at the effect on each of the bacteria bacteria. So what I'm going to do is to look at the 0 0.1 here and make a straight line through it. All right, so I'm going to go straight through. And so that will be 0 0.1. And so if you notice the effect right here, let's go back into it so you actually could see um, better. All right, so here it is for the sensitive strain. And on top, it will be here for the resistance strain. And so what is the effect? If you notice, the resistance strain is continuing with its growth rate. It's still at that almost the same level. But for the sensitive strain, the, the growth rate de decline. And so let's put our answers in. And so for, I'm going to use the abbreviation just for time. So... SS is for the sensitive strain. I noticed that there was a decline in population. So there's a decline as an outlined effect. So the decline in population. 
and for the RS, which is the resistance strain, there is no effect on the population at all. At 0 0.7, let's go to the graph of 0 0.7. And 0 0.7 is here. So what I want to point out at 0 0.7, notice what happened here, is that the population going across is not changing. It's on the same level, right? So at 0 0.7, it has no more effect. Let's go up here as well for 0 0.7, which is this line. And 0 0.7 also for the incentives for the resistance strain, there's also no effect as well. So for both of them, there is no effect on the population. No more effect at all. All right, so here we can see for the SS, which is the sensitive strain, there is no effect. And also for the resistance strain, there is no effect as well. All right? And so the next part of the question here now asks us, this is a four mark question, is to explain, to explain the difference between the growth rate of bacteria could lead to natural selection. So the differences between the growth rate of the bacteria could lead to um, natural selection. So again, if you notice the graph, the the, this is the sensitive strain. Notice there's decline over a period of time. However, for the resistance strain, the population pretty much maintain the, the number or the level. All right? There's some slight decrease here and there, but overall, the population still maintains. Right? And so, Let's start off by saying here, our first point I want to make is that faster growth rate, okay, the faster growth rate for corresponding concentration of tetracycline. Results in greater adaptation. And the reason why I'm saying greater adaptation, because what I want you to remember that when we talk about natural selection, we're talking about the ability of an organism to adapt to changes in the environment for their own survival. So the faster the organism is able to adapt, then it, it will be favored in that population and continue to reproduce and grow. So the next point I want to make right here now is that the declining population, declining population, or the declining growth, declining growth rate indicates a little to no adaptation. So once you see there's a decline in the population, that means the organism is not adapting. All right? So the organism is not adapting. And so therefore, there's a little to no adaptation where that is concerned. All right, so the next point I want to make right here now is that the adapted bacteria, okay? So make, make sure it quickly. So the adapted bacteria or the surviving cells, let's say surviving cells, the abduct ab or surviving, uh oh, all right, surviving cells, all right, will continue to grow. To grow and reproduce, let's say grow and reproduce, all right, you continue to grow and reproduce, all right? So, so they will reproduce, and so if they reproduce, continue to reproduce, what will happen is that they will result in more resistant strain cell. So this will result in more resistant strain cells. All right, so great. 
Another point I can make right here now is that the let's make a point uh, one more point here. Let's say the bacteria strain, the bacteria strain, right? That was not able to adapt will become extinct. All right, so they become extinct. So therefore, over time, only resistant strain cells slash bacteria will be seen in the population. All right, so great. So that will be the explanation between the difference in growth rate that will lead to natural selection. All right, because if you're not growing, you won't, you won't reproduce, you won't divide, and then the bacteria will eventually become extinct. All right, so now we're going to jump on to the next part of the question. And so the next part of the question here is part B. And this one say the figure three below illustrates how mutation brings about genetic variation. And so, just to run into it real quick, it said that um, figure three, mutation and genetic variation, that's what it's about, is a completely missing codons in the boxes labeled A and B. So let's go up to A and B real quick and see what it's all about. So, the DNA um, strand uh, as well, the DNA has two strands, all right? And so, here's the bottom strand of the DNA. And so, which, which we call a corresponding strand. So box A is corresponding to G, T, and G. So what you need to remember is that what corresponds to, to G is C. What corresponds to T is A. And so G again is C. All right? And that's for the DNA. Now, the DNA strand will be copied and converted into RNA. And there are two RNAs. But what is shown here is the tRNA. So the mRNA is not shown. All right, and why this is a tRNA? Because the tRNA will lead to the protein formation. So what I want to point out here is that to get this here, which is the RNA, you have to convert the top strand right here. You can just go ahead and convert the top strand. And if there's a T, you'll change the T's into U's. Okay, that's a very important thing you need to note. So to get my B, I have to use this. So notice it's G, A, G. Okay, so G, A, G. So I'm going to do the same thing here, take this down, bring it down to this point. But what I will have in my box, let's quickly point this out, I have my G as well. So I'll put my G there. So I have my G. Okay, so I have my G. So I have G first, which is the first letter in the DNA. And then the second letter is T, but RNA does not contain any T. There's a U instead, which is uracil. So we're going to have U instead, and then we're going to have G as again. Okay? So that is the B. So A, uh, let's go on the lines. We'll put them on the lines. So on the, that's why they provide the lines here for you. So you could put the answer right here. So it says G, A, C for the A line and for the B box that was missing, or the B code, and is, is G, U, G. Okay? So again, you just look at the, the DNA and you'll figure out what the RNA is, okay? So these will be our answer. All right, so let's go to the next part of the question. It said, with reference to the mutation in figure three, explain how mutation brings about genetic variation in the DNA protein, in the DNA protein and the cellular level. So we're looking at three different levels right here. But the first thing I want to talk about is what is mutation. I talked about mutation earlier, but I want to give a... Quick, quick definition for what is mutation right here. So mutation, when we talk about mutation, we are talking about a change in the sequence or genetic sequence. In the change in genetic sequence. Let's say genetic sequence. Okay. So once the genetic sequence has changed, 
then that is mutation. There are some changes. It could take place in the, in the DNA. It could take place in the genes. So now let's talk about for each of these structures, which is the DNA. We'll talk about DNA protein and cellular level. So there are three levels that we have discussed right here. DNA level, and we must make reference to the, to the mutation that is shown in the, the, the mutation that is shown in the diagram above. So we must make reference to that. That's very important. All right, so let's go into it now. And so let's put it right here. Let's start with DNA first. So let's say for the DNA. So the first point I'm going to talk about is for the DNA. All right. So for DNA, the first thing I want to notice right here for the DNA, notice I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to you to show you what I'm talking about. What change in DNA is the A that changed to T. Okay. So the sequence that changed is the nucleotide, which is adenine, was changed into thiamine. Into thiamine. So once that change has taken place, the sequence in the nucleotide have, have changed. So what I'm going to do right here is just to talk about it right here. So we're going to say now the nucleotide, okay, with the nitrogen base, the nitrogen base uh, adenine, the adenine was changed. Um, other nine changed to thiamine. So change to thiamine. All right, change to thiamine. All right, and so here now ends the corresponding, ends the corresponding DNA, uh, ends the corresponding DNA strand changed from um let's say it's changed from what let's go back to it to change from here um ct uh ctc to cac okay great okay awesome so put that in so it's changed from ctc to cac all right so that's exactly what happened there so there's a change in that so that's where the mutation actually takes place, all right? So, so notice that the change is occurring, that the T will change into what? A. And that is for the corresponding DNA strand. So that's the DNA mutation, or the changes within the DNA. And so let's go now for the protein. So um, let's say for the protein, all right? So for the protein. All right, so now what happened here for the protein now? Let's go down a little bit more, so a little bit more space. All right, and I may have to go to the next page to answer the next part because there are three things we need to answer. We need to answer all this, the cellular part as well. So, so no more we'll talk about this. Since the, since the sequence in the DNA, in the DNA changed, right? It resulted in a change resulted in a change in the RNA. All right, and we could go back to the chart to see the change in the RNA. So it results a change in the RNA. Um in the RNA sequence. All right, so very important to note that. All right, so since the RNA change, okay, so what is important now, since the RNA change, then the codon will also change. All right, so this result in a change in the codon. In the codon, I remember the codon is needed to, to form the protein, right? In the codon for the formation of protein, all right? In the codon for the uh, protein formation because remember the codon will be necessary to make it to go to the tRNA and the tRNA will carry the particular amino acid um, to change. All right, so what is important here now? So once that codon is changed, then very importantly to note is that the amino acid will also change. Okay, and remember that amino acids make up what protein. So I'm going to make a note right here now 
is that this to be a little bit more specific let me just go back to it so notice what is happening here now because of this change in the rna from gag to gug we have a difference in the amino acid all right which is glutamic, glutamic acid into valine and so we'll make a note of that in my notes right here all right so um so there is a change there is a change from GLU, and GLU is glutamic acid, glutamic acid, all right, the glutamic acid 2, VAL, which is VAL, and VAL is for valine, okay, VAL is for valine. All right, so what I want to make note again is that these are amino acids, right? So these are amino acids. Once the amino acid change, then the sequence of the protein will change. Because remember now, um, just to make a point right here, to, to just to remind you, to make protein, you have the sequence of amino acid, right? So you have a sequence of amino acid. And once you have a sequence of amino acid in terms of how the amino acids occur, that is the primary structure. And then once you have a sequence of amino acid, then what taking place after that is folding of the protein. And then once the protein had folded, then the protein will give rise to particular properties or to specific properties. So it depends on how the proteins are folded, they get a particular property. So again, the sequence of amino acids followed by the folding of the protein structure, that is the primary structure. Once the primary structure has been folded up to the quaternary structure, then you have a property of protein. But also I want to make a reference to or to remind you that it is the tertiary level is where the protein folding actually gives rise to its specific functions or properties. All right, so let's go to the next thing now, which is the cellular level. So let's talk about the cellular level now. So quick, we could do this. So for the cellular level, so for the cellular level, what's going to take place here? All right, so on the cellular level now, remember now that cells are made up of proteins too, right? Okay, so what I'm going to talk about here is that since now, since there is a change in amino acid sequence, since there's a change in the amino acid sequence, right? Um, in the amino acid sequence, that was used to form the protein. All right, to form the protein. It will result in a change in the structure of the pro of the cell result in the change in the structure of the cell okay so the ch the cell will change because the protein change right the structure of the cell will change all right and it's changed because of that mutated um protein okay so so the structure of the cell will change so 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 no can say hence um the cell structure will contain the mutated protein, all right? And once the mutated protein is there, then the properties, all right, so we can say, therefore, the properties therefore, the properties oh, oh, right, therefore, the properties of the cell will be affected. All right, so they will be affected. Um, and I can say properties and functions. So let's say properties and function of the cell. All right, and so once there's a change in the cell structure, 
because of a changes in the DNA that leads to a change in protein, it will affect the cell eventually. Because the cell will not contain that, that mutated protein that is not normally there. So therefore, the functioning of the cell will change. Or it's that to be a mutated cell. So it will have a different um, function and property. All right, so that is a six-mark question. I think two marks for each. This is the last part of the question here. It said, natural selection was proposed by Darwin to be the mechanism for evolutionary change. Discuss the process of natural selection. So let's talk about what natural selection is first. And we also mentioned this in the first part of the question, the natural selection. And natural selection is the process. It is a process indeed. It is a process uh, by which, uh, by which, Organisms adapt to changes in the environment. All right, change the environment to continue their survival. All right, so that's what adapt um, natural selection is. So the process by which organisms are able to uh, adapt to changes within the environment to continue their survival. All right, so let's start with the, let's give this in some steps. So let's start with one. So the first thing that you need to note for natural selection to occur, there must be a change in the environment. So there is a change. There is a change in the environment. Okay, that's the first thing. All right, and that change will impact the organism survival. So there's a change in the environment that, um, let's say, may impact or affect, that may impact or affect the survival of the organism. Okay? All right, so what are some of these examples? Let's talk about some examples that I'm, um, when I say changes, so some examples of changes I'm talking about here could include um, food source. So the food sources, for example, um, it could, predators could also change as well. Okay, so food source, predators. All right, and also what could also change is climate. So these are some of the examples of the environment that may change, etc., etc., et et right? All right, so the food source can change. The predator, or introduction of predator, or lack of predator thereof, all right? And climate could also change. And so these are some of the few things that may change. That's the first thing you need to talk about, that there's some changes in the environment. The second thing you want to mention is now is that the um, population, the population of organism exhibit genetic variation so there are some differences within organism in every population right so all population will have some differences and so let's talk about some examples of differences here so some examples of differences could include um let's say speed yep so speed could be different so some organisms may be faster than others or within the same population some, some of them may be faster than others. Um, ability to move faster, run faster. So speed could be one. Color. Their color could also be different. Their size could also be different. And there are many other things could be different about them. All right, so any physical um, or phenotypical um, traits could be different All right, due to their genetical makeup. So the third thing I want to talk about right here now, or the third point, is that some changes... All right, or some um, some changes, some changes such as okay, let's separate this. Some changes such as uh, some changes such as food source, for example. Let's say such as food source can lead to competition. So you may have competition within the population because of changes in the food source. I just make a note of that. 
other changes though just make a note of this as well other changes other changes such as color all right um let's say climate yeah some other changes such as climate for example all right um or even distance or geographic location so some of the changes such as climate all right may result in adaptation okay may result instead of comp instead of competing for food sources they have to result in no adaptation all right result in adaptation so for example um if they have to run for food then the faster one will have to be you know the, well the organism will have to be faster or slower and so the faster one may reach the food reach the food quicker if climate changes to become very cold the organism that have more fur or let's say the organism that are able to find um, crevices that they could hide for example and be warmer or find shrubs the one that can even make nesting those that could adapt to the climatic change you know will actually will be fitter for that environment so again some of the changes to the food source can lead to competition while other changes such as climate may result in adaptation or creativity all right or a change in behavior so let's say adaptation or change in behavior because the behavioral change could also be important right all right so very important there all right the next point i want to make here now which is my fourth point so let's call this number four and in number four now is that organisms with favored let's put it right here organism organisms with favored or let's call that um advantageous all right so favored or advantageous all right so advantageous traits all right so favored i just don't want me to spell it like this all right, so favored or advantageous um, traits are better able to adapt, better able to, let's say, adapt right here, adapt. All right, able, able to adapt to and survive, let's say, survive uh, the changes in the environment. All right, so that's the next thing you want to make a note of, all right? So once the changes has taken place, all right, so there's some changes in number three. So once those changes has taken place, then the organism with favored or advantageous trait are better able to adapt to the changes and also survive the changes. And so the next thing I want to talk about is my fifth point is that, uh, let's call this number five, the less favored or disadvantaged the less favored or disadvantaged let's say disadvantageous trait will not be able to adapt or survive The environmental changes. All right. So as a result now, so ends a reduction of this trait. All right. So again, once uh, the organism is unable to adapt or a disadvantage of trait. So let's say the environment is dark, but, uh, but one of the organisms is white. That organism will be able will be quicker to be seen by predators, and the pred and the predator may eat that one more frequently, and eventually they cannot reproduce, especially if if they are um, exploited in terms of feeding. So if the predator is greater in terms of number and feed on them only consistently, then over time because of over harvesting, then that organism may not exist exist anymore. 
And so the sixth point, um, which I think I could stop here. So the sixth point that I'm going to make right now is that only, so only the trait that was favored, all right, only trait that was favored, all right, um, only trait that was favored, let me put right in here, um, best fit, all right, or the fittest, let's put the fittest right here, only trait that was favored, or the fittest, the match of fact, let's put that in open and close quotation, so only the fittest of the fittest will survive. Remember that statement? Only the fittest of the fittest will survive. So only the trait that was favored or the fittest, all right, favored or the fittest will survive, will survive the changes, will survive the changes, all right, we'll survive the changes. Hence, the final statement here now, promise. Hence, over time, let's say over time, ends over time, there will be a change, and this change what we call evolution, change or evolution, all right, in the population. So over time, you will not see the unfit trait or the trait that was not able to survive the changes in the environment. So this is the outline of how uh, natural selection occurs. All right, so again, nice to have you here again. It was a great pleasure. Hope you do well in the examination. I'll come with question number three in short order. So until then, keep safe.